Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm really excited about today's video. If you can see from the title, we are going to be talking about jealousy and comparison. Now, this is a really important topic that I feel needs to be addressed, especially in our generation and in the culture that we live in. You're on social media, you're comparing yourself a lot. It just seems like there's so much competition in this world and there's so much striving to be a certain type of way when we are not called to be the same as everyone else. We are called to be different and unique and we are called to just be ourselves. So that's why I think this is a crucial, crucial part of your journey is to just be able to really stand firm in your identity in Jesus. Before I get into this, I just want to say that I am by no means coming on here and claiming that I have got this together because I don't. God is still working on me. He's still healing me and restoring me in different areas. And this is one of the areas where he is still perfecting this in me. And it obviously, it's going to happen. We're humans. But I have learned a lot of different things and a lot of different areas about what it truly means to be happy with yourself and to not compare yourself to other people and to not be envious of what they're doing and what they have and what they look like and all that stuff because really your identity just needs to be grounded in the truth. So I just put together like three tips for you guys to really help on this just journey of being confident in yourself and not looking to other people for approval or looking to other people to compare. So I just wanted to share three ideas that I think will really, really help you guys out that I have learned over the past couple of months. So first step that I did to really walk out this journey is I took a break from social media for, I want to say almost a year where I literally like fell off the face of the earth. That's what it looked like because I didn't go on my Instagram at all. I deleted my Twitter. I'm really glad I did that. I deleted my Snapchat. I had my Instagram, but I would like not go on it. Like I would not scroll. That was my rule. I'm like, when I go on Instagram, no scrolling, no scrolling, not allowed to go on any of the stories. No. The only reason that I went on Instagram during that season was because if I felt like a picture or something was just going to glorify God and to, you know, be for him and to lead people to him, then I would go and do that. But I would always have a heart check first and be like, am I doing this for attention or approval from others? Or am I genuinely trying to be a good person and share light on social media? So that was something that was really helpful for me to just really back away from the social media for a while because it is really, really crucial to understanding yourself. And when you're scrolling and you see all these people trying to tell you what to attain and what you should look like and what you should be and where you should be in life, that is so confusing and it is not good for your character. During that time of being away from social media, that's when, like I said in my previous videos, I really discovered myself because I hung out with God so much and he was able to reveal to me how he created me and that he loves how he created me and that's okay. So for a while I was a little insecure about how girly I was because I am a very big girly girl. I like my makeup, my hair, my outfits, my jewelry. I'm into all that type of stuff and I would feel really insecure about it to be honest and God revealed to me like I made you girly for a reason. Like this is showing a part of me to the world. I'm expressing myself to the world through you. So embrace what I made you to be. Embrace how I made you to be. Don't run from it or try and be another type of way. Embrace the original design that I created you to live out. And that really, really helped me to just grow so confident 
in who I am as a person, in my uniqueness, in my style, and my makeup. Like, it just really helped me to understand that it's okay to be myself and it's okay to be this way because that's who God created me to be. So, I really needed to get that engraved in my head before I went on social media and had a comparison game all the time. So, to sum that first point up, because I know what God says about me and because I know what God thinks about me, I don't have to compare myself to other people because I'm not supposed to be like anyone else. I'm just supposed to be like me. Number two, it's a beautiful story. It really is. So there is a scripture in the Bible where Jesus says to Peter, Peter was one of his disciples, as for you, follow me. And that verse was what I clung on to for a couple months probably. I was really, really clinging on to that verse because I needed to understand it um, and I needed to live that out. I relate to Peter a lot. Peter is one of Jesus' disciples. He loves Jesus so much, but sometimes he acts out. He kind of gets just a little bit jealous of like, hey, like, do you like them more than you like me? Like that type of thing. So basically, there was a time before I was going into work, I was comparing myself to a girl who was, you know, really pretty and she had a great relationship. I just saw that she was living her best life and I was getting a little bit jealous before I went into work and I was getting a little bit salty. I was like, hmm, I was a little jealous whatever, I went into work and I work at a hospital. So I have patients that I work with and one of the patients that I had that day was actually a pastor. I didn't even know. I was talking to him and then ended up, we started talking about the faith a little bit. He told me he was a pastor. I was like, wow, that's amazing. And I was like, I am a Christian too. Like I love the Lord. It's so awesome to meet people who are also in the same faith. And he, it was so random. Like it was the most random thing ever. Before I was leaving the room, he was like, you know, Peter was very jealous of John, which is one of Jesus' disciples. And he was like, do you know like that conversation that they had when Jesus came back when he was resurrected and he was meeting with his disciples and he was talking to Peter about his future. And then Peter sees that John is there and he looks at John and he's like, well, what about him? And Jesus is like, as for you, follow me. Like, don't worry about what he's doing. That doesn't matter to you. This is like our relationship. Don't look at what they're doing. This is about us. And he said that to me and I was like, okay, I gotcha, I hear you God. So he was really telling me in that moment through that guy, like, stop comparing yourself. My, my path is so different for you. My path is so unique for you. Like, don't worry about what other people are doing. Like, just follow me. And that gave me so much peace and clarity. So I'm just going to read the scripture that says this whole event that went down between Jesus and Peter. So basically Jesus was talking to Peter and he was going to be explaining to him the type of future that he was going to have, the type of future that Peter was going to have. So John 21, 18 through 23. And it says, I tell you the truth, when you were young, you were able to do as you liked. You dressed yourself and went wherever you wanted to go. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and others will dress you and take you where you don't want to go. Jesus said this to let him know by what kind of death he would glorify God. Then Jesus told him, follow me. Peter turned around and saw behind them the disciple Jesus loved. The one who had leaned over to Jesus during supper and asked, Lord, who will betray you? Peter asked Jesus, what about him, Lord? Jesus replied, 
If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? As for you, follow me. So the rumor spread among the community of believers that this disciple wouldn't die. But that isn't what Jesus said at all. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? So that was a really freeing scripture for me because it really just shows that like Jesus is interested in you and him, in your relationship. Just follow Jesus. He is leading all who follow him on their own separate journey. Your life is not going to look like the person next to yours life and that's okay. That's really exciting to just follow Jesus and see where his path is taking you. God's love for each of us is the same no matter what we do in the body of Christ. We all play a significant role and his love for us is the same no matter what role we play. That is something that is really important is to hold on to the promises when the lies come your way. So step number three would be to remember that God looks at the heart, not the outer appearance. So this is just a little backstory. In the book of 1 Samuel, God tells Samuel to go to Bethlehem to anoint the new king of Israel because Saul, Saul was acting up. He was not fearing the Lord. It was just not a good time for him. So the Lord told Samuel to go to Bethlehem, find a man named Jesse, and that he was going to anoint one of his sons to be the new king of Israel. And that is found in the beginning of 1 Samuel chapter 16. So now jumping to verses six through seven, listen to what God says in his word. When they arrived, Samuel took one look at Eliab and thought, surely this is the Lord's anointed. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And this is super, super important to remember is that God is not looking for the best looking person to fulfill his purpose. That's not a character trait of God. God is love. And so he is looking for people that are truly after his heart. Lastly, I just wanted to end with the verse Romans 12, 21. And it says, don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. So this means that when we are tempted to do evil, when we are tempted to be jealous and to compare and to judge and whatever, don't let that evil conquer you, but conquer that evil with good. So for example, something that really helped me was if I realized that I was getting jealous of another girl, if I felt that jealousy coming over me, I would pray for them. I would pray that God would bless them and keep blessing them and keep giving them the desires of their heart. Um, was I feeling it all the way while I was praying it? No, but that's okay because that little seed of faith really does do a transformation in your heart and God honors when you take those little steps of faith to walk in obedience and to really try to grow in these areas. And then you're able to celebrate other people's gifts and other people's talents. And once you can come to that place, I think it's really beautiful to then be able to look at the people and say, wow, I really appreciate their amazing gifts that God has given them and you can encourage them and you can celebrate them and you can support them rather than comparing and feeling some type of way. And it is a journey and God is full of grace and full of mercy and he's patient with us during this process. That is all that I have for today. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you guys have an amazing and blessed and beautiful day.